nation in a denomination is going to raise up new men with new vision. I'm going to preach on vision tonight, God willing. And we've got to have vision and passion. God's got to upset our whole schedules, our lifestyle, our way of eating, our way of living, our way of socializing in the church. God help us. Sure you can get a hearty church. If, if you put a chicken supper before the prayer meeting, they'll come for the chicken supper. You drop the chickens, you'll drop the crowd. Because they're all chicken, but anyhow. <coughs> I believe... If I didn't believe there's going to be an awakening. Okay. God has given me the privilege of knowing praying men. There's a little fellowship of people in a town called Zion, Illinois. You know where that is? And it's still there. There's one or two original people that were there with Dowie. <coughs> and I went there. They asked me to talk with the man. He's upstairs in bed, normally. He speaks with the mic to the congregation downstairs every morning. Do you know what happened to him? I walked in. He thanked me. He said, Mr. Hill, you do me an honor. I've read your books. I said, please don't say a word. My mother said, if ever you go into royalty, you never turn your back. You, and when I backpedal to the door, I said, I want to thank you. Do you know that man, Andrews? God called him to go to uh, Israel, and he mastered Hebrew. And when he got there, God said, go back. He said, but people gave him a, do as I say, go back. Intercede for America. What did he do? For 30 years... He prayed from 10 o'clock in the night till 5 o'clock in the morning by himself. Mm. Oh, you talk about David Brin, and that was an, I'm talking about our day. I'm talking about the one I talked with. When they carried him in his little wooden casket out of that room, it was the first time he'd been out of the house in 12 years, never out of the house. How does a man retain his fire? 